bit of a different environment for this video because uh, there was an ant infestation in my room. So I had to spray Raid and um, yeah, the, the, the smell was killing me, man. I was getting high off the Raid. Plus, my neighbor's kid kept screaming all morning, man. It was just loud and throwing off my concentration and would have been, would have been good for the audio. So anyways, we're out here in my living room. Let's get started. What is the first question? First question is from Matthew. Hey Jason, I just sold my 85G Master. Anyway, I'm deciding between the Sony 1.8 or the Baddest. Question is, the OSS on the Baddest, does it work that well? I have the A7R2 and I already know it has IBIS already, but would the other, would the two be like a combo to work even better? I'm starting to get into video, so it might be a deal breaker for me, even though the Sony is like super good on the price. So I honestly don't know if having both in-body image stabilization and optical steady shot will improve the stabilization. All I can say is that um, I did read somewhere that if you do combine both together, I think the there's two axes on the camera that would shut off to utilize the axis on the lens, giving you giving you a better stabilization. But I cannot confirm that myself. Honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. I've shot. Uh, setups with in-body image stabilization and no optical steady shot and optical steady shot with no in-body in image stabilization and both together and I honestly couldn't tell. I believe I do shoot more with lenses that does not have optical steady shot with the in-body image stabilization on the a7R2 and the a6500 and you know I've even gotten compliments from you guys uh, on the two concerts that I shot. I just literally handheld and just shot some stuff and you guys are like wow how the hell did you get such steady shots and I've always just said don't do any sudden panning or toting or jerking just try to keep it steady on your subject and it should be fine. So yeah, Matthew and anybody else who was who were wondering, I don't think you need to spend the extra money on the baddest if you already have cameras that have the built-in stabilization in the body. So save on the money, get the 85, I would say. Um, but if uh, if uh, weather having weather sealing is important, uh, that's the advantage that the baddest has over the Sony 85 1.8. Next question comes from my good friend Lindo. Uh, he's asking, what would be your main camera if you only had to use one for a whole year? So even though I only use the Sony A9 for like, I don't know, four or five days, I can honestly say that that's one of the best cameras I have ever used. Uh, best hybrid camera, that is. I mean, the photo capability is like, out of this world. I mean, come on, silent shooting, the fast autofocus, and even though it's 24 megapixels, I feel like I've gotten sharper focus, uh, sharper results from that camera versus if I shot something with the A7R2 or the A6500. So I was really happy with the photo results that I was getting. Uh, video capabilities wise, I wasn't really able to test it out too much but I believe it also shoots in 6K and downsized to 4K. So the image quality, the, the video quality is gonna look amazing, I'm sure of it. And the autofocus, no doubt about it, would do just fine. I mean, it has face detection autofocus. Yes, it's a huge bummer. It does not have picture profiles. It doesn't have S-Log 2 or 3, but you know what? I could make it work. I really don't shoot S-Log 2 or 3 all that much. I mean, even with the wedding stuff that I've been doing, I've been shooting picture profile one on the 6500 and the A7R2, and they pretty much look like Rec. 709 anyway. So if anything, uh, I do apply like a little minor LUT to my footage, about like 15%. So honestly, if I had the A9, if I need to shoot a video with it, I'd probably put it on neutral, even hell, I would even put it on standard and just do the same thing as I've always been doing. Just put a LUT at like 15% over it and call it a day. So yeah, if I could only use one camera for the entire year and nothing else, the Sony A9 would be my choice. And I'll open up this question as well. If you guys can only shoot with one camera for the rest of the year, let, it, let me know what camera would that be and uh, maybe what lens as well. All right, next question comes from Alan Ip. Hello Jason, I'm a YouTube fan of yours. I would like to ask if my main goal is 80% video and 20% photo, should I upgrade to a full frame A7 II or A7 Mark III? Uh, I'm currently using the A6300 with the 10 to 18, 18 to 105, and 55 to 210. Would there be a noticeable better result if I were to use a full frame camera? So let me be honest, I've never shot with the A7 II before 
photo or video, so I can't really make a comment. Uh, but I do know that the a7 II does not shoot in 4K, but it does have in-body image stabilization, right? Um, but if you're thinking about doing a lot of video, I think the a6300 has way better video capabilities than the a7 Mark II. I mean, it can shoot in 4K, like the 4K is even crispier than the a7R II and the a7S II. Uh, the focus is a lot better. The autofocus is a lot better. So if you rely on autofocus for video, stick with the A6300. I remember when Locke was vlogging with the A7 Mark II and the focus was never really on his face. He just kept focusing on his background until he upgraded to the A7S II. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend the A7 II for videos. Um, if you want to upgrade to a full frame, I would say, yeah, wait for the A7 Mark III. Difference wise, I don't think you're gonna see much of a difference moving on to a full frame, especially when you're shooting videos and you have a bunch of crop lenses anyway. So just stick with the A6300. So here's a question that I wasn't really able to answer, but this person was able to find out himself. And I just wanna share this uh, solution with you guys. So. The question comes from Photos by Godi. Hey Jason, I have a question. My friend just got the A6500 and he was wondering if you can Wi-Fi transfer video, not just pictures. And I didn't know, I just thought it only it can only be photos, but you can transfer video as well. You just have to change um, the video file format to MP4. And I never shoot MP4, I always shoot XAVCS or whatever that codec is. So those files are obviously gonna be too large to be transferred over Wi-Fi from your camera to the phone. But um, MP4 is a lot smaller, that's what I would assume. So, so you can definitely transfer videos from the camera to the phone, but it just has to be MP4. All right, I think that's all the time I have for FAQ Friday for this week. I'm sorry that this one was short and the last one was short as well. Uh, I have a lot of wedding videos to like get through before the end of this month, plus a documentary edit as well. So I'm trying to get all those cleared out before Photo Plus, but I'm gonna try to squeeze in one or two videos a week just to keep the channel going. And uh, yeah, gonna be at Photo Plus in about a couple of weeks in New York. So if you're gonna be there, definitely hit me up. Uh, let's go hang out, let's meet up, let's go shoot and all that good jazz. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.